Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are in the Iowa and we're joined by Hectic Paul. Now if you guys remember correctly, Hectic Paul was the guy that uh, I ran into in a match. Uh, we kind of worked together in that match and did pretty well working together. So then we decided to run some pl or some divisions and we had a lot of fun that night. Um, and this is one of those matches that I wanted to show you guys. Now, it's just me commentating over this. There was no um, live commentary or anything like that. So you guys are good there. Um, but this is going to be a fun one, guys. They have four destroyers on their team. And they feel some type of way about me. I don't know why. But they are going to throw themselves at me. In the most ridiculous display of just recklessness I have ever seen <laughs> uh, so hopefully you guys are ready it's gonna get dicey early <laughs> unlike yesterday's video which is actually funny because it's today technically it was uh, a long time before I got into a fight we're not gonna have to wait that long in this because the destroyers are gonna come for me they're gonna come straight across and they are gonna try to ruin my face Luckily, Hectic Paul and my destroyer over here on my left are both going to stand guard. Now, whether they meant to do it or not, Hectic, I know, was, was planning on it uh, as far as we were trying to decide what we wanted to do but based on what the enemy did. I am detected right now. There are torpedoes in the water towards our other destroyer, and it's about this point where Hectic starts to go, okay, we're, we're going to be in for a fight, and he's not wrong. Because we are definitely going to be in for a fight. As you can see, two of the destroyers already lit up. A destroyer only gets lit up, especially an Akatsuki and Kagura, only gets lit up when they are firing their guns. Which means they are wanting some business. Now, I reach out and I touch that Akatsuki for 3,000 damage. Which doesn't seem like a whole lot in Battleship's terms. But when you only got 12,000 hit points or whatever the Akatsuki has, 3,000 damage is significant. <laughs> You definitely want that back. Now, with that being said, they've already lost their Akatsuki. He got torped of all things. He got torped, which is pretty awesome for me. But that is going to cause the rest of these guys to go into some sort of blood rage and just immediately charge out and try to kill all of us. Now, I know I made it about me initially, but I don't think it was actually for me that they were intending to come after. It was mostly for that... Uh, destroyer to my left but the Kagero makes himself known and we immediately take half his hit points and between the other two destroyers firing at him he's not long for this world but he has the benefit of being in smoke so as long as he's not firing his guns he's gonna be okay which and as you can see I am putting as much water between me and the torpedoes as possible i am not about that life we got the mist of the water coming over the the bow of, or the stern of the ship oh look another kagero uh let's just go ahead and put a round on him now he gets lucky we only clip him with a couple rounds uh towards the stern of his ship the other kagero is about dead so i would expect him to be dead shortly come on somebody finish him and there's the torpedoes it's almost like we saw that coming Luckily, we're far enough out, he can't hit us, and we are able to dodge pretty easily. But as you can see, there are already more on their way. Luckily, with the destroyer that close to them, I can see them for a very long time. And it would be very difficult for me to not avoid getting obliterated by torpedoes that I can see from half a mile away. So, uh, yeah, we just go ahead, hit, fit ourselves right in the gap no problem but as you can see three destroyers entered not a single one of them left thanks to the help of hectic paul and the other destroyer that's in front of me now that being said the one that's in front of me took a beating the fletcher took a beating but couldn't have done it without him. appreciate it now you can relax not get yourself killed and we will do everything we can to repay the favor by trying to absolutely dominate the enemy from this point on. And it looks like we're about to have another challenger enter the arena. Wait for it. 
I saw an Iowa. Oh, hello, Turpits. Iowa, Turpits. Iowa's broadside on! Oh, this could be juicy. Shot out. And three, two, one, and... Pow! Oh, he turned in slightly. Just enough to keep us from obliterating him. It's unfortunate. But there's plenty of other targets to shoot at right now. So we're just going to use this island as best we can. Nuzzle up against it. Point our nose towards the enemy. And, oh, they had to turn to avoid one another. Which means he is now giving me a flat broadside in an Iowa. Really? Oh, you have got to be joking. How did that not just Citadel him? <laughs> really? Come on. It's all right, though. Turpets, right there. Iowa, right over there. Iowa, I like to get them off the board. Because they are so incredibly dangerous. The dispersion build Iowa is probably one of the most disgusting things that you can ever give your broadside to. Now this guy got lucky multiple times, and it looks like he's going to get lucky once again. Now I can attribute that A, to the fact that he kept turning, and B, to the fact that he has a uh, camo on his Iowa, and that is causing some extra dispersion. Um, and I cannot, uh, I cannot overstate how, uh, how much that 4.5% of uh, dispersion that you get from camo helps especially versus battleships it may not notice you may not notice it against cruisers or against destroyers because they have really accurate guns but against battleships it is so frustrating to shoot at people with uh, camo that gives four and a half percent to their dispersion because i have watched ships like we just seen with the iowa just giving it up begging for it actually and then I shoot at them and nothing happens. Now this Turpitz is not expecting me to shoot at him at this point. I haven't shot at him yet. So I go ahead give him a uh, salvo just to make sure. And as you can see, I'm immediately like targeting that Benson. I'm like, okay, this dude's eight kilometers out. I ain't about that life. I need some help. And we do get a nice hit on the Turpitz and we're already, and you know, we had 7,000 uh, damage done to the destroyers. And now we're up to 37,000 damage that quickly we've gotten 30,000 damage now Benson is begging for it and I ain't about to sit here while he goes dark and and hides so I shoot where I thought he was and it and it made it error it ended up working out let's just put it that way before I get myself tongue-tied and can't speak anymore we put a nasty hit on him took him below half health which now means that uh, Hectic Paul should have the advantage in a gunfight pretty easily due to his increased health and the fact that they both have really good guns. Amagi is broadside on. I don't need to say how many times this is not a good plan. <laughs> Amagi, this is not going to feel good. But he gets away with it again. Now, maybe it's me, but I have been hitting so few citadels lately in most of my games that it's actually starting to annoy me. <laughs> like, people give up the sides of their ship all the time and I just seem like I, I either overthink it or I'm just getting unlucky but I hit people where I want to hit them and nothing happens now the Amagi has now turned towards us he's bow tanking us we still have the Iowa out there somewhere but at some point we're gonna have to push ourselves up in there and start dealing with these battleships the old-fashioned way and as you can see the guys on the left are starting to shoot at us from behind cover which is definitely not where we want to be because I can't return fire. But this Amagi is testing it. He is now less than 10 kilometers away, still broadside on. And we get another good hit, taking us up to 59,000. Two penetrations, one over pin, and a bounce it looked like. So pretty solid. As you can see, the closer we get to them, the more hits we get. The more hits we get, the more chances of that thing throwing citadels is is increased. And there's another Iowa. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I have to deal with this Amagi, I would actually shoot at that Iowa from across the map because he was given a pretty juicy angle. 
But now that I know where the Iowa and the two Turpitzes are, I don't have to worry about them. Because I have an Amagi right here. And me and this Amagi need to have an understanding. He's been extremely lucky this up to this point to not get obliterated. However, he just lost his ability to see me. As soon as that plane lands, I'm no longer detected. Which means I have the advantage in this next exchange. Wait for it. This is going to be dirty. Hello, sunshine. Oh, he's coming towards me a lot better than I thought he would be. That was not preferable. And luckily for us, it was kind of mutual. We both fired into angled armor and both of us pretty much did nothing to one another. However, he turns to avoid me, which is preferable. I don't want to ram him. He doesn't want to ram me. But that leaves him in a very perilous position. <laughs> which position would you rather be in right now? His or mine? Because he turned to avoid the ram, which is preferable, he gives this up. And that hurts. Now, we're going to just keep scooting as fast as we can right on by him because his secondaries are one thing. I don't want them guns going off into the side of my Iowa. We know what that ends up. And here I was thinking about going completely broadside, but I hold off because I think that he's going to shoot me. He does shoot. He fails. And now we're about to be loaded with the rear. There we go. We get two more shots into him, leaving him with very low health. And now instead of turning towards him, I keep turning away or at least sailing away, giving him the worst possible angle possible. Now he can shoot straight into the rear of my ship, but he's not going to get citadels through the rear of my ship very often. And he's giving me a very juicy target and he's run aground and that's going to be the GG. And of course, that's the Citadel. <laughs> it's always the Citadel. The kill shot, no matter how little health they have, it seems like is always the one that's a Citadel. But, th that ain't it. We're at 98,000 damage thanks to that uh, encounter. We did take quite a bit of damage, but he, he took a lot more damage than we did. And we're going to be able to heal one more time, getting some more of that back. Getting us at least half of our health going into this final exchange. We have three battleships left. One of them is headed towards me in a Turpitz. Hectic Paul is doing what he can to keep this Turpitz's attention. And look at what the Turpitz has done. He has turned completely broadside. Well, not quite, but mostly broadside to an Iowa. It looks like he has realized his mistake. Look. Which would you rather be broadside to? An Iowa that can delete you in one salvo if you're not careful. Or a destroyer that you're almost guaranteed to not be able to shoot. You're going to see torpedoes from the destroyer, you know that. But if you give me the side of your ship, you'll never see the torpedoes before you see me. And he avoids the torpedoes. But in doing so, once again, forces him to overangle. And we're going to make him pay. Now, that was only one penetration. Well, it says two penetrations and three bounces. But you can see we're hit three, or that would have been five shells out of the six that we fired at him. That's pretty good. <laughs> he sets us on fire. We're going to go ahead and, and get rid of that. We're recovering some of our health. And he once again goes broadside and just begs for this. Just begs for it. That's not preferable. Now, he took torpedoes. He couldn't do anything about that. But then he also overangled to me, which means he dies. <laughs> because between the torpedo strike and me, he was never going to get much further. <laughs> but our job isn't done yet. There's still another Turpitz out there. And we still have time on the board. We're not in any danger of winning on points. And there's still well over looks like a minute and a half nope never mind minute minute to go guys <laughs> one minute which means at max i'm gonna get one good salvo and then one rushed salvo are we going to be able to finish the turpits off now we have somebody in position to potentially spot him in hectic paul and there he is he's off to our right side 
Wait for it. Come on, line up the shot. He's got not the best angle in the world, but at least it should be penetrations. Now, we got that shot off just in time to be able to reload again. That gives us our high caliber and takes us up to 124,000 damage. Are we going to be able to take his life? He's given us a very good look. We can potentially citadel him, and now he's going completely flat to us. Come on, baby, light my fire. Ten seconds to go. Three, two, we got it loaded. Fire the guns. Four, three, two, one. Got him. No! <laughs> no! How are you going to rob me, game? Why? <laughs> Why? We had him. We had him so hard. <laughs> 148,000 damage, two citadels, one of them coming with the last possible second. Almost got our third kill there. And thank you again, Hectic Paul, for all the help in your destroyer. Between the two of us, top three, there you go. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.